Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we, it's a choice, shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Morning Inspiration. Before we go any further, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Please forgive me of all my sins. Give me what to say to these, your precious people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Today we will continue with our Watchmen series. Um, <clears throat> I will be uh, speaking to you from the book of Ezekiel. We'll be in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. I'm going to read 1 through 13. Once again, I will be in the book of Ezekiel. It's the Old Testament, 33rd chapter, 1 through 13. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took no warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will, I, why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall righteousness be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trust in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. So, good morning, good morning, Sister Hemphill. We are in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, verses 1 through 13 is what I just read. And we're still continuing with the Watchman series. So we see right here that Ezekiel is, had a calling to be a watchman for the, the, the nation of Israel. Okay, and we talked in the previous, uh, the previous uh, message about the watchman. And a watchman was somebody whose job was to watch for incoming danger. They were to warn you. So what they would do is, in many cases, they would blow a, a trumpet or they would blow a horn or something to signal, hey, imminent danger is approaching. That means you need to get ready. So we still have things that are similar to Watchmen right now because if you're in a place where you hear the tornado, the sound goes off and it says, warning, warning, you know, uh, imminent weather approaching or uh, 
a tornado has been spotted or whatever. That is a warning system. We hear it on the TV, we hear the emergency warning systems. Those are warning systems, but as part of the body of Christ, we are to be watchmen. Where when we see something coming, we are to alert people. Okay, and what they said in this chapter is the children of Israel were in captivity during this, this book. And at first they didn't want to listen, but now they're sorrowful about what they had done. And so this is, a, 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 this, in this, this chapter, it's warning and it's hope with warning. So if you notice, if we jump down to where it says that if somebody was doing righteousness, so if somebody was operating how God wanted them to operate, they were, they were following what God's commandments were, they were trying to live what God said, that's good. But if they start messing up, all the good they did does not override the evil. Okay, so don't think, oh, well, I've been in the church for the last 40 years, and, you know, I'm saving. But if you're cutting up and you're not living how God said to live, you're, you are found guilty. That's what this is saying right here. I mean, let's just make it plain. Okay, if you have lived a, 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 a reckless life and you haven't, haven't done what God has wanted you to do, but you repent and you accept Christ, guess what? All that stuff that you were doing, is forgotten. That's not counted to you. Okay? And that's how God is. It says he doesn't, he, he takes no pleasure in the wicked. Okay? Right here it says in 11, saying to them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So God is not sitting up there enjoying watching people die who are going straight to hell. He takes no pleasure in that. Okay? He says, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? So he's talking about Israel, but this goes to all of us. If we have wicked ways, we need to turn from them. Ask God to forgive us. Ask the people who we've wronged to forgive us. And, and, and ask God to lead and guide you. Accept him. What does it say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's what it says in God's word. Okay, we have to accept Christ. Okay, we either accept Christ or we accept the devil. It's one of the two. You can't sit there and say, well, sometimes I feel like a Christian, sometimes I don't. It's not an almond joy commercial where they say sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes I don't. You know, no, 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 no. What you have to do is you have to make a choice. And guess what? You're not going to always get it right. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Okay? It's time for us to stop trying to act like people are perfect. Okay, when I look at the Bible, I see a lot of imperfect individuals that had faith in God and they were able to do incredible things through the faith that they had in God, through God working through them. They were not perfect. They were not strong. But God is perfect and God is strong. And when we partner up with God, then we're able to do some incredible things for the kingdom of heaven. That's what it comes down to. It doesn't come down to how famous you are. It doesn't come down to, well, you know what? I have a title and I, I, I got a thousand people to watch whatever I say every day. And I got a million followers on Instagram. And I got, that's not what it comes down to. What it comes down to is what you do for Christ. That's all that's going to last. Okay? An argument that you have right now is not lasting. Okay? Arguments, yes, are, are hurtful. A lot of people have feelings hurt. But that's not lasting. What we need to focus on is the kingdom of heaven, expanding the kingdom of heaven. We need to be focusing on expanding the kingdom of heaven. We need to focus on charity beginning at home. That's one of the scriptures that is very overlooked. Charity begins at home. If I can learn how to love at home, if I can learn how to love my wife, if I can learn how to love my children at home, then when I go out, I am effective. But if I'm not having success loving my family, that's what it comes down to. Family. We need to start looking at the Word. The Word says when you get married, you leave mama and father and you cleave to husband and wife. That's what it says cleave stick to okay that's what we have to do 
getting back to the Watchmen series. We are called to be Watchmen. Everything is going on in our communities right now. Racism is running ramp rampant. Okay, we have sin running rampant. And we just say, well, you know what? I just go in my, my house and close the door. We need to start speaking to this thing and saying, you know what? I'm reclaiming my block for Christ. I'm reclaiming my neighborhood for Christ. I'm reclaiming my county for Christ. I'm reclaiming my region for Christ. I'm reclaiming my state for Christ. I'm reclaiming my country for Christ. I'm reclaiming the country where my ancestors are from for Christ. So in other words, what I'm saying is every part that you have touched, you're reclaiming it for Christ. Be it your ancestors or be where you're at right now. You're reclaiming that for Christ. That's what we need to do. We need to be about expanding the kingdom of heaven. We need to be about God's business. We need to start talking to strongholds and, and having strongholds broken down. We need to be talking to the captives and setting captives free. That's what we have to do. As watchmen, we're watching and we need to be sounding the alarm. We need to tell people, hey, you don't have to go to hell. That neighbor that, that might be racist, you still got to pray and you still got to love him. That neighbor that, that doesn't want to operate the right way, that wants to pray, play crazy music, have parties and all that, you have to pray and you have to love on them. Okay? That person at the job that doesn't want to act right, you got to pray and you got to love on him. We have to share the gospel of Christ. We have to be watchmen. We have to alert. We see a parallel between this, this chapter and what it was talking about in John when he said he was one crying in the wilderness. Make, make his way straight. Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was a watchman. We are to be watchmen. Okay, and in this chapter, Ezekiel is recalled to be a watchman. It's like, hey, you're being recalled to be a watchman. So recall, we think about recall when something is defective and, you know, they take it off the shelf and they, they found something that wasn't right with it. But in this chapter, recall is when, guess what? I need you to return to service. So if you're in the military and they recall you or they reactivate you, you're ready to go back into battle. Okay, thank God I'm too old for that now. I don't have to worry about getting recalled. Because it's been a, a, quite a while since I got out and now I'm, I'm past the age of being recalled. Okay, you can have younger people do that. I'm kind of old now, so I'm not trying to be recalled for a, a, a physical battle, you know, right here. But we are called to be watchmen and then there is a recalling. I'm talking about right now, we need to get excited. We need to be on our post and we need to be watchmen. That's what this comes down to now. We need to tell people, you know what? Hey, you see somebody who is talking to you about they're having problems or, hey, I'm, I'm having an issue at work. I'm having an issue with my family. I'm having an issue in my neighborhood. I'm having an issue with my finance. That's when we can be watchmen and we can say, you know what? You don't have to live like you're living. There's hope. The only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. It's not hope in a stimulus check. Stimulus check is nice, but that's not hope. That's false hope. It's not hope in, oh, well, we have, you know, a certain party in the office now. That's not hope. Well, we don't have that other party in. That's not hope. We need to put our hope and our trust in God. We can't put trust in man because man is just like you and I. Sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes we miss the mark. Okay? We are human. That's what we do. We have, they said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, the flesh messes a lot of things up. The flesh says, hey, I can talk to people any type of way. Okay, the flesh says, you know what, I can be argumentative. The flesh says, you know what, I'm, I'm going to call it how I feel. All about me. Okay, that's the flesh. The Bible tells us submit one to another. Guess what that means? That means, you know what, I don't always have to be right. Okay, if we try that a little more. And we incorporate our watchmen. Okay? It says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Let's start practicing loving kindness. Let's continue to work on being loving and kind. Until, guess what? 
we're, it's, it's no longer work. It's just natural. It's coming out of our pores. If we sweat, you, you got some, oh, I smell some loving kindness. Let's do that. Because it says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Okay? Nobody wants to see you come up with a frowned up face and you, you got to tell them something. Nobody wants to see that. We need to have loving kindness. We know how we like to be talked to. So if we like to be talked to a certain way, we should talk to people a certain way. That's what we should do. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word, Father. Father God, I ask if any hear this who are outside of the ark of safety, that they repent and ask you, what must I do, Lord, to be saved? Forgive me, Father, for I've, I've sinned. I don't want to live like this. Father God, I invite you into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you sent Jesus to die for me and that he is risen from the dead. If, if, they, if you've prayed that and you really believe that in your heart, according to Romans the 10th chapter, 8 through the 10th verse, you're saved. I recommend you read that on your own, Romans the 10th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse. Read that on your own. I pray right now, Father God, that we have a spirit of watch, watching and praying. I pray that that spirit is renewed in us, Father God. I pray that any who are suffering with the coronavirus, I pray that they are healed, Father. Because your word said, by your stripes we are healed. It said that, by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we're healed. That means, guess what? We're healed of disease. We're healed in relationships. We're healed in finance. We're healed in, in everything. It says, by your stripes, we're healed. Whatever we need healing for, we're healed by your stripes. They beat you, Lord Jesus, for our healing. Okay? I ask, Father God, that you release your peace that passes all understanding to those who have lost loved ones. We know this has been a, 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 some type of time. We are in a pandemic. We're locked down. When I talked about the children of Israel, they were in captivity. We're in a, a form of captivity right now because we don't go and come as we choose to anymore. We can't just jump in a car and go take a trip to somewhere, or we can't just go to see family and friends in various states. We're in captivity. But what this message tells us is there is hope, and there's hope right now. And the hope is not in the vaccine. The hope is in Jesus Christ. I'm told in Proverbs, the third chapter, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. In other words, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not. In other words, don't put a lot of confidence. Don't lay back on your own understanding. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, and he will direct thy paths. It doesn't say path, but Path. So in other words, if guess what? I got a path that I got to take to work. He's going to direct that. I got a path to being an effective, you know, spouse. He's going to direct that. I got a path to being an effective parent, an effective grandparent. He's going to direct that. I have a path to being an effective servant, which means, hey, we're saved to serve. He's going to direct that. I have a path to praying stronghold down in my neighborhood. He's going to direct that. I have a path to winning my neighborhood back to Christ, winning my my, my my region, my county, my state back to Christ, he's going to direct that, okay? And I'm asking today, as many of you that see this, partner with me and let's be watchmen. Let's pray earnestly. Let's pray without ceasing that God move in a mighty way. Let's invite God in to move and have a revival. A revival like the old days where, where people are saying, what must I do to be saved? Where the drunk is throwing the alcohol down. Where the, where the smoker is throwing the cigarette down. Where the adulterer or the guy who just, hey, you know what, I got the can't help it, help it. He comes in and says, what must I do to be a faithful husband? Or what must I do to be a faithful wife? Where they are compelled to just, hey, I need, some, I need you, Lord Jesus. That's what we're praying for today. And as I always like to say, God loves you and so do I. You be encouraged, okay? God bless you. And this was Morning Inspiration.